All right, all right. I think this looks pretty good. Get my sleeves straight. They tend to ride up. They tend to ride up on these guns. You know what I mean? <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the brand new Key Lab Essentials Mark III from Arturia. Now this is definitely one of the better keyboards that I've seen come out in the last year or two. And we're gonna talk about why in this video. We're gonna talk about the hardware, the different functions and features that are on the keyboard itself. And then we're gonna talk about the software that's included as well as how it integrates with the different DAWs. Before we get into it, if you're new here, this is Al B and I make a lot of videos on music production tips and tricks, as well as hardware and software gear available to you. If that's something you're interested in, take a quick second, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Without further ado, let's get into it. Yes, sir. So let's talk about the hardware itself. On the back of the keyboard, you got your typical USB-C port to power it on and to connect it to your computer. You have a MIDI out port, which is kind of interesting for this level of a keyboard because I find that most people using a keyboard that I would consider a budget keyboard don't have gear that they need to control. Or if they are someone who already has that kind of gear, has sense like I do, they typically already have something to control it with. So it's here and use it if you need it, but it's not really like a big plus, but nonetheless, it is here. And finally, it has a control port, which can be used to connect a sustain pedal, an expression pedal, or just a regular foot switch. So those are the only three ports you have on the back of the keyboard. So moving to the front of the keyboard, I'm gonna make a few call outs, right? I'm not gonna tell you everything that's up here because some of the stuff is typical, like your mod and pitch wheel, like, okay, it's got a mod and pitch wheel. <laughs> but um, one thing that I do like about it is that it has dedicated transpose buttons, which is important because on most keyboards, you have to like go into the menus to actually transpose, or you have to like hold shift and press another button to transpose. But here, you know, you could transpose up or down with just one button. So I think that makes it a lot easier to use. Now, moving to the front side of the keyboard, the first thing that's going to stand out to you is going to be the eight drum pads. Now, these drum pads feel much better than the previous Keylab Essentials keyboards did. This one feels a lot more quality and feels closer to what the Akai drum pads have been known for. I will say that I also noticed this with the Mini Lab 3 keyboard as well. Those drum pads felt really good. So it seems that with this third generation of keyboards, Arturia is really stepping up their drum pads. Um, they're pretty firm, not too firm and not too squishy they're just right as corny as that sounds they felt pretty good right out of the box and i didn't have to play with the sensitivity too much but you can if you want to and we're going to talk more about all the different things you can customize a little bit later now the key bed actually feels like a budget key bed just being honest it doesn't feel as good as like their key lab mark ii did um because that wasn't the essential mark ii that was a more premium keyboard and so you had a more premium key bed the key lab essentials mark iii it feels just like you would expect for a budget keyboard but it's nothing that's going to be problematic or make you feel like you're playing with a toy in the studio it still feels pretty good I play a good amount of keys and piano and it didn't bother me really at all. They are synth action keys, they're not semi-weighted like you normally would see, um, but nonetheless, not a problem, pretty good for this price range. I did like seeing that they have dedicated transport controls as well versus like the Mini Lab 3 where you have to press like shift to change the mode and then press a drum pad to play or to record or to stop your track. Here on the Keylab Essential Mark III, you have dedicated transport controls right on front, and you also have the tap function, which for me was a big plus, and that stood out to me because when I'm in FL Studio, my doll, I can just tap out, you know, the rhythm or the melody that I'm hearing in my head, and the doll will automatically go to that BPM, and it makes it much easier to get an idea from your head and actually out into your computer and start creating that way. So I really like the fact that they have this dedicated tap button on the front of the keyboard. More in the center, you have this main encoder and screen, which are really helpful. Um, the encoder comes in handy a lot when you're actually navigating through the DAW and through the software. 
and it gives you a lot of information on exactly what you're doing. It also tells you like when you're hitting your drum pads, like how hard are you hitting your drum pads and what velocity is being registered. And when you're using it with some of the integrations like with Analog Lab and with your DAW, it's just way easier to see what you're doing. Um, and it's way easier to also configure the keyboard. So let's talk more about those different settings there. You have art mode, chord mode, hold mode and scale mode. Now they're all pretty self-explanatory, but the good news is that you can actually control and set those from the main encoder in the center. So for example, when you go to chord mode, you can use the encoder in the center to set, well, what's the root note of your chord? And you can build an actual chord there by you know using the main encoder, or you could use preset chords that come on the keyboard as well. And it's similar for the ARP function. When you turn on ARP mode, you can use the main encoder and the buttons there to see the different settings for ARP, like time division, swing, and whether you're arpeggiating up or down, or whether you have a random arpeggiation that could go up or down. You can configure and set all that right there from the main encoder and using the buttons, and it makes it much easier to do it. And it felt pretty intuitive. I didn't have to go read a manual to figure out how to use those functions. With scale mode, you can set what scale you're trying to play in and it'll make sure every key that you hit, you'll be in scale, which is really helpful for people who aren't well versed in music theory or just can't play the keys that well. This will make sure you can play a good melody that at least sounds decent without getting confused about what's actually included in your scale or not. So really good, especially for beginners. The keyboard also has nine knobs and nine faders. Now, typically you would see eight knobs and eight faders, but Arturia went with nine. And what happens at least with FL Studio is that ninth knob and that ninth fader are always controlling the master track. The other eight knobs and faders control whichever section of the mixer you have selected. And you can use the keyboard to change whether you're controlling the first eight tracks or the second eight tracks, so forth and so on inside of the mixer. So that's really some of the better integration that I've seen with keyboards in FL Studio. Speaking of integration, let's get more into it. This keyboard integrates with several different popular DAWs, including FL Studio, my DAW of choice. It also integrates with Logic Pro, with Bitwig, and with Ableton as well. Now, the integrations with FL Studio were really good. Again, being able to control the mixer from the faders and knobs is really important to me because often when you're mixing, what I've learned is that sometimes your eyes can throw off your ears, right? I've noticed that if I'm looking at what's going on too much, it can affect how I'm actually mixing in the end versus now that I can control a, a gain knob from the keyboard, I will just like close my eyes until it sits just how I want it in the mix. And I found that I get better mixes that way versus just visually having to click and drag the gain knob on the software. And sometimes it can just throw off your mixing. So that's really nice integration there with the mixer rack. Then inside of the channel rack, you can use the main encoder on the keyboard to change what channel you're on, play your keys. So if you're like building up your melodies, you can be playing one melody on one channel, use the main encoder, go to the next channel and play your counter melody with a different instrument or whatever you're doing. And it's just much easier of a workflow for me. It also integrates with the browser in FL Studio, but this is where I ran into a little problem. So you're supposed to be able to select different plugins and samples and load them from the browser menu without having to touch your mouse. But I was able to only find and select my plugins and samples. But when I clicked the encoder, it didn't actually load them into my channel rack. And therefore I still had to grab my mouse and drag over the plugin I was trying to load or the sample I was trying to load. And I can't lie, that was a little bit frustrating for me because it was one of the features that I knew I would be using a lot and I looked forward to it. So if that's something you guys out there have gotten working, let me know. I couldn't get it to work. I had the same exact issue on the Mini Lab 3, but the Arturia official videos for integration with FL Studio say and show that you can actually do that, but I wasn't successful. So there are still apparently some issues with the integration that I expect would be fixed sooner than later, but that is one that I've ran into. 
otherwise everything else works really well being able to control even go to your playlist and load in different clips in fl studio to build out your track it worked pretty well so i would say if you're someone that's looking for more of a tactile workflow and you're looking to get away from the mouse and the keyboard so much when you're making your music this is a way to do that and especially in this price range it's really good i saw some other videos on how it integrated with ableton live and that integration seems to be a little bit even tighter than what it is with fl studio so if you're an ableton live user this is definitely something you're going to want to check out so it also includes some really good software. The main thing that it includes is Analog Lab and the integration with Analog Lab and this keyboard is tight. You can choose the different presets in Analog Lab and once you've chosen a preset, you can use the knobs and faders to change the parameters of the preset, whether you're adding in some reverb or adding in the chorus or changing any of the effects that are assigned to a preset, you can do it right there from the keyboard. But with other Arturia plugins, you don't have that same level of integration, which I was a little bummed out when I tried it because I actually like Arturia's plugins. I have Pigments, I have Stage V, I have Piano V2, and then I have the mini Arturia plugin as well. So I have quite a few Arturia plugins. Oh, and I have augmented strings, but none of them really integrated with the keyboard at all. It would be really nice in the future to see them create more of an ecosystem like Native Instruments did with the complete series of keyboards. That would be something I would love to see. But it does come with Analog Lab. It also comes with The Gentleman, which is a Native Instruments upright piano VST. It also comes with trial subscriptions to Loop Cloud and Melodics, and it comes with Ableton Live Lite. So it comes with some pretty good software. Another piece of software that it comes with is the MIDI Control Center, which is basically the application that you use to make all of your custom MIDI mappings with the keyboard. You can change the color of your drum pads. You can change what they're assigned to, of course. You can change the velocity and the sensitivity of your drum pads and of the keyboard itself. And so if you know what you're doing with MIDI, this is gonna be a really important application for you. While we're on the subject, for those of you who are FL Studio users, I will be coming out with a custom FL Studio template for the Key Lab. And this will be particularly for your drum pads to function like an MPC where every drum pad triggers and controls a different channel in your channel rack instead of you having to load the FPC. This method that I'm going to show you in another video is much better and much more of an easier workflow for me and allows me to tap out my drums and really get a vibe going quickly. But we'll cover that in another video. I'll put a link on the screen and in the description once it's ready. I didn't mention everything, only the things that I needed to highlight to you all to help you make an informed decision on whether or not this keyboard would be good for you and your studio. Personally, will I use it? I probably will use it. It's a good price, right? It comes in at $220 for the 49 key version and I think $270 for the 61 key version. Both of them coming under $300. You're not gonna find too many keyboards that are full size, give you this level of functionality for that price. So I would say if you're looking for a keyboard that has some good integration with not only FL Studio, but with Ableton Live and other DAWs, you should definitely consider this one. Now, this is not a paid promotion or anything like that. I really am trying to bring you guys what I would consider fair and honest reviews. And I honestly think this is a good keyboard worth investing in. And it might just be the best new budget full-sized keyboard for your use. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you found it helpful, take a quick second, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me so I can keep bringing you guys this good content, all right? And until next time, this is Al B, and we are out. Yes, sir.